note we're back here in the science cave and we're going to look at the uh, the life cycle of the sun and the sun if you remember is a pretty average star from the uh, HR diagrams it's on the uh, it's on the main sequence of stars and the sun right now is about halfway through its lifetime of, of 10 billion years but we'll we'll start where the where the sun started and if you look right here uh, if I get my pen going again And if we look right at the birth of the of the sun, what you found was remember from the Big Bang theory, it has a lot of leftover material, a lot of gas and dust. Well, what ends up happening is over time, these billions upon billions upon billions, you know, you can't even count how many particles. Gravity starts to take over, and this giant cloud of gas and dust starts to condense. And as it starts to condense. Uh, friction takes place, they heat up, uh, you get more and more pressure built in from all the gravity and what ends up what ended up happening is once you can get this enough material and it gets close enough together you got gravity pulling it in and you get this pressure and what's happened is they start heating up from this friction and you can get a star being born. Well. You might think, well, how does that happen? Well, you, you've got to get to approximately 10 million kelvins. And that is pretty darn hot there. And what ends up happening is you have nuclear fusion. And fusion, and now we're going to get into a little bit more later in the year, but nuclear fusion for a, for a sun to ignite or to, to start shining, if you will. What you have is two hydrogens coming together. You have a hydrogen plus another hydrogen. Actually, what gives you is helium, the element helium. Well, some of the mass gets converted to energy. And this energy is what we see as the light and all the different other properties, all the other stuff that the sun starts sending out on the electromagnetic radiation. What Einstein said, you know, his famous equation E equals mc squared. Well, what happens is some of this mass, some of the mass of these two hydrogens gets converted to pure energy. And that is fusion, when you have two atoms combining to form one. And this can only take place in very, very high temperatures and pressure. And so gravity, again, is the key to all this. <laughs> well, what we have right now, the sun, the sun still so shining it's about halfway through its lifetime and it's in the middle right in the middle if you can see it right here it's in the middle of its uh, lifespan and you know, typically we think of it about five billion years old well you know if there's energy there the energy is being formed uh, with this uh, hydrogen and hydrogen is the lightest element well eventually as you can think it's probably going to burn out or get used up and when that starts happening, as a, what ends up happening is you have right now you have what's called an, there's a nice equilibrium going on for all this time right in here. For all this time right in here, the pressure inside the sun. You now you got gravity pulling in. You got gravity pulling in on the material, but you also have this formation of energy happening too and so you have the energy pushing back on the from the inside out nuclear fusion takes place you know in the core of the sun so you have a nice equilibrium going on and uh, you know the sun's you know, you know pretty pretty stable if you saw from the main sequence well what ends up happening sooner or later and again about five billion years the sun and you're looking at this point right here is going to turn into a a red giant. Well, what ends up, what really happens here is most are all, all of uh, the hydrogen, all of the hydrogen is used up. So what ends up happening really, you run, you run out of fuel. 
and the temperature of the pressure becomes so great that helium starts getting into converted to carbon. Well, what ends up happening is there's a whole bunch of outward pressure here in the sun. So this outward pressure starts pushing out and the sun begins to swell or to grow. And they call that the red giant stage. Yeah, I wrote over it, but we'll put it back up here. The red giant stage. After this stage, after the red giant stage, what happens during uh, the next phase is going to kind of shed off all the layers on the outside of the red giant and you have what's called that planetary nebula right here. And after this all gets shed off, what's left is kind of kind of that core because most of the gas here has been blown off in outer space and what you have left is this core, excuse me, this core of what's left over. And this is a white dwarf. And this white dwarf will eventually dissipate into space. You know, it's going to end up cooling, cooling off, and it's going to form what's called the brown dwarf. So, you know, you think about the lifespan of the sun, the life cycle, and this is, again, holds true for a vast majority of the stars. What you have is, you know, all this leftover dust and gas starts condensing, condensing with gravity, and you get enough pressure in here, you reach about 10 million kelvins. Again, that's the, uh, the temperature unit in the metric system. That fusion can take place, and these two hydrogens will fuse into helium, but some of the mass is converted to pure energy. And here we have the life cycle of the sun. Eventually, when all the hydrogen is used up, the sun is going to swell into a red giant. Eventually, what's going to happen, it doesn't take too long, about a billion years, you can see on here, this excess skin, if you will, gets blown off as a planetary nebula, and what you have left is a white dwarf. And eventually, that material is all going to you know, get used up, and you're going to left with pretty much a very, very dense rock, if you will, called a brown dwarf. So uh, this is a life cycle of sun, and it holds for many of the, uh, of the main sequence stars. So we'll catch you on the next one, and uh, we'll talk to you later.